Oh, I wasn't expecting that to start off my first TED talk, but here we are. That didn't come out of my time, right? I'm just joking, I'm just joking. <laughs> my job as a poet is to tell stories. I tell my own personal stories and when working with others, I encourage them and facilitate them to tell their own. I do this because I believe that stories are magic. They bridge us together. They point out our similarities and make us feel less alone. They help us understand this crazy big madness that we call life. I tell my own personal stories and I usually talk about taboo subjects. Subjects that nobody else wants to touch. Subjects that make us feel uncomfortable or awkward. Subjects that we keep under our beds or in our closets just out of sight. I do this because I believe that by sharing my own personal stories about those horrible, uncomfortable things helps dilute the shame surrounding them. And I believe shame is one of the most dangerous emotions that anyone can feel. I wrote a poem in 2014 when I was age 21 about an abortion I had had. I was trying to make sense of this experience I'd had even years later. I released it on the internet, which maybe on reflection wasn't the cleverest ideas, but I did it anyway, because I wanted to make sense of this thing that nobody was talking about, that had so much shame wrapped against it. A lot of women have abortions and it's medical and it's a procedure and it's easy. And I love that, I think that's amazing. But for me, it wasn't like that. It felt very difficult and very complex. It was a hard decision and it was a shameful decision for myself. And I don't really know why, because at the same time of having all these feelings, I also felt so much gratitude that I lived in a country where I was able to choose. I was able to choose with my own body. So I had all of this stuff going on, even years later, so I decided to put it on the page. And then, in a way, I kind of could look at it and look at all its complexities and try and make sense of it. Now, some people ask me now if it was the right or wrong decision. And I don't think life can be categorized into rights or wrongs. Things are not that simple. Different paths are laid out for us at different times and we must blindly choose and hope for the best. And I think, for me, it was the best. So the video was shared on Huffington Post, Upworthy and The Guardian, and it became viral. And I instantly got messages from women all over the world coming forward and saying that they had the same experience. And for a minute, we all felt a little less alone. And that, to me was magic. But then I went to sleep, naively, and thought that that was my job done, like pat on the back, done. Unfortunately, that was not the case. Abortion, as we all know, is a very hot topic in every single country of the world. And overnight, my inbox, which was once a place of love and support and a newfound community, became a place that was much more sinister. It had a lot of messages that were mean, threatening, scary, and very unsettling. There was a couple of comments that were quite funny. My favorite being, I can't tell with her strong Scottish accent if she's a brilliant poet or as dumb as a teapot. <laughs> I really liked that one. And there's other ones that I'm not gonna repeat today because I don't think that they're useful but I bet a lot of women in the room have been called them as well. But yeah, it was funny when somebody was talking earlier about trolls under the bridge, because I instantly was like, yes, trolls under the bridge. That's what happened to me as well. But time moves on and news changes. And I kept performing the poem, I think she was a she, because I believed that hopefully it was diluting the shame about the subject that no one was talking about. And I also was kind of doing it as a bit of a resistance. But I don't do the poem as much anymore. I'm older now. I have other stories to tell. I have other 
shame to dilute. And I see this happen every day in my work when I'm working with young people, with adults with additional needs in prisons. I see shame being diluted by talking, just talking. And I don't expect everyone to agree with me on abortion. But I think that we're now at the point where we should be able to disagree without silencing each other and without shaming each other. And I'm going to do the poem again for you today. And I'm going to do it as a dedication. It's a dedication to the one in three women in the UK that have abortions. It's for the 70,000 women worldwide per year that die from backstreet abortions. It's for our sisters in Ireland who are just about to go for the first time and vote to legalise abortion. It's for the women imprisoned in El Salvador for having abortions. It's for the Dominican Republic and all other countries throughout the world that only have abortion if it threatens the women's life. And finally, it is for all the women that were faced with the same choice but decided to become mothers. I salute you. I see you. I am one of you and we will celebrate and we will cry and we will grieve and we will laugh and maybe we'll disagree. But we will not shy away from this subject because that's the thing about shame. It tends to scuttle under the bed when you look directly at it, when you shine light upon it. I think she was a she. I think she was a she, and I think she might have looked exactly like me. Full cheeks, hazel eyes, and thick brown hair that I could have plaited into dreams at night. I would have stuck up glow up stars on her ceiling and told her they were fireflies to protect her from the dark. I would have told her stories about her grandfather. We could have fed the swans at Victoria Park. She would have been like you too, with long limbs and her sarcastic smile and the newest pair of kicks. She would have been tough tougher than I ever was and I would have taught her all that my mother taught me and I would have taken her to the museums and there we could see the bone dinosaurs and look to them and wonder about all the things that came before she was born. She could have been born. And I would have made sure there was space on the wall to measure her height as she grew. I would have made sure I was a good mother to look up to but I would have supported her right to choose, to choose a life for herself, a path for herself. I am sorry, but it came at the wrong time. I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed. I'm so sick of keeping these words contained. I am not ashamed. I was a teenage girl with a boy she loved between her thighs that felt very far away. Doovy days and dull don't do family planning well. I am one in three. I am one in three. I had to carve down that cherry tree that had rooted itself in my blood and blossomed in my brain of responsibility. I didn't have the age or energy to maintain the branches casting shadows over the rest of my garden, the bark causing my thoughts, my heart to harden. I am not ashamed. It's a hollowness that feels full, a numbness that feels heavy. Stop trying to fit how this feels on an NHS bereavement brochure already. I am allowed to feel it all. I am allowed to feel I am woman now. I am made of steel and she wasn't a girl. And she wasn't a boy. That's just the bullshit you received to keep you out of parliament and stuck on maternity leave. Don't you mutter murder on me. 70,000 per year, 70,000 per year, that's 192 per day from coat hangers, painkillers, the back alleyway way, don't you mutter murder on me. Worldwide performing abortion like homework, looking for the answers in the grooves where palms, the bulges in our bellies, the whispers in our ears, only to be confronted with question marks. Women have been hidden away in the history books. After all, it's history. His story, well, this is her story. Our story, God damn it, this is my story. And it will not be written in pencil and erased with guilt. It will be written in pen and spoken with courage. You will hear it on the radio on your way to work. You will study it in English. You will read about it on the bulletin boards next to the flyer about yoga for babies because I am not ashamed. I am a woman now. I will not be tamed. And I have a determination that this termination will still have a form of creation. It will not be wasted because this is my body. This is my body.
And I'm sorry, but I can't care about your ignorant views. When I become a mother, it'll be when I choose. Thank you so much for having me. Cheers.